1993, Cadillac unveiled North Star on the world, an engine and series of other components that really showed GM was seriously taking serious the luxury car market and competition. This was an award-winning engine, which later went on to develop a horrible reputation for reliability and complexity. In a previous video, I made a comment about the excellent North Star, and I was pretty roundly criticized for it. Um, this is my mea culpa, but I'm not backing off that totally. And so I thought I'd take this opportunity to describe the history of North Star, kind of its position at the time, what were the problems, and explain why I said that in a previous video. So stay tuned. So first off, welcome back. If you haven't been to my channel before, please click the subscribe button. Please smash that like button. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. But like I said, in a previous video I did where I was talking about the X-Body cars and how I think they kind of personified everything that was wrong with GM from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and into the 2000s, I made this comment. Even when they had really good cars, like the Cadillac STS, it is a fantastic car. It, it's, it's large. It's got a great North Star V8. Good and I understand why people are critical of that. Now, one comment that I did get said that I need to let people know I'm not a mechanic and everything here in my channel is an opinion. I'm a little surprised to have to say that, but here it is. I'm not a mechanic and everything on my channel is my opinion. So moving on, the interesting thing is North Star is not the engine. Actually, North Star was a package of components for Cadillacs um, that GM put in, and the engine ended up with a very bad reputation, which I think is partially, okay, undeserved. So after we talk about the history, I'll tell you why I phrased it the way I did, why I'm kind of standing behind it, and I hope it, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. All right, just me and you talking here. But let's roll back the history and talk about where North Star actually came from. In the early 80s, GM saw the future and what was coming. They knew that they were going to be receiving increased competition from the Germans and from Japanese luxury brands that were going to be coming out, which included modern V8s. Now, GM is excellent at making push rod engines for the most part, and they've done fabulous for many, many decades of stretching the engineering, keeping them competitive. But they understood what we would call today the optics of the situation, that if you're in the luxury car field, if you want to be taken seriously, you can't have an old engine in it. So they authorized moving forward with a brand new engine and transmission for a brand new series of cars that they really thought were going to be extremely competitive and kind of hold back those imported luxury brands that were coming. Interesting fact number one is North Star is not a Cadillac engine. What we call North Star is kind of a lazy term because it is a package of technologies we'll talk about. The actual original engine is called the L37 and it's not a Cadillac at all. It's developed by Oldsmobile. In somewhere in 1984, Oldsmobile was given the go-ahead, and they started to develop this new engine. And again, it was put out in the first Cadillacs in 92, is 93 model years. It took nine years to develop this engine, and what they released was honestly as good as anything else out there. A 4.6 liter dual overhead cam engine, variable valve timing, fuel injection, distributorless ignition, powertrain control module, and pretty famously, a limp home mode, which means that if you lost all of the coolant, you could still drive up to 100 miles without any coolant in the engine, right? That powertrain control module could alternate cylinders, and you had, I believe it was an 8-quart capacity for oil, which helped keep the engine cool enough. Really, really, really cool. The first version made 290 horsepower and I believe 295 foot-pounds of torque. They upped that eventually to 300. They put it in multiple products, and it was well-reviewed, and it was well-received. Now, they made several other versions of this 
engine. Uh, they made another one which was more torque heavy, more everyday driving than performance. They made one which was modified but designed to be used longitudinally in a car. And they made, most interestingly, a six-cylinder version which was called the Short Star, which I've always thought was kind of funny. But the North Star, as it's used in Cadillac, was not just the engine. It was this brand new engine. It was a four-speed automatic transmission, which I found very interesting was derived from the three-speed they developed for the X-Body cars. So the front-wheel drive, compact, cheap cars that Chevy sold, they took that transmission, heavily modified it, came up with a four-speed. It also included, the North Star system did, a road sensing suspension, uh, four-wheel disc brakes with anti-lock brakes, and speed variable power steering. This was all relatively cutting-edge stuff for the time. So when it came out, the engine was well-reviewed, Cadillac sales kind of were pretty good, and it actually won uh, Ward's Best Engines for three years in 95, 96, and 97. But then problems started to show up and it developed a really bad reputation. It's generally described as being a head gasket issue, but it's really not. The North Star system, the engine itself, has an aluminum block, and the bolts they used to hold the head down were not right, okay? I'm not a mechanic, right? And what would happen is if the engine got hot, the bolts would pull up and coolant would get into the firing chamber. Uh, you'd get this smoke out of the back, and also that caused the engine to run even hotter, which made the problem even worse. Now, GM made a couple of attempts, once they were aware of it, to fix this. Uh, the first one was in uh, 2000, and then again in 2004, 2005, they finally largely fixed the problem. Between 2005 and 2011, where they continued to use the engine and the North Star system, it was no more prone to head gasket failures than the previous years. But that still means this engine was produced for about 12 years with a problem, and GM had trouble fixing it. And the, what I'm reading right here is said that the, the 97 to 99 was the worst year for it. And... It's not the head gasket going bad or the bolts going bad. It's the price to fix it that really became the problem and became the oh boy moment for a lot of owners. This engine is packed in so tightly, you actually have to go underneath and drop it to gain access to the engine and be able to get to the bolts. I can't verify this. I've never priced it myself, but the number I've heard thrown around many times is $5,000 to replace some bolts. And that's often why you can find Cadillacs of this era very inexpensively. I did a quick search this morning and found these results. So for $5,000, you can go buy a Cadillac of this era, but there's a chance it needs $5,000 worth of work. So owners who had cars that are worth two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, they just get rid of them instead of fixing them because it costs so much to actually fix them. So the North Star and the, you know specifically the engine got a really, really bad reputation that maybe is slightly unjustified. Certainly if you know what you're looking for and you get something in that 2005 and beyond, you're probably not looking at a car that's any more uh, unreliable than engine-wise than another one. But while I was researching this, I found another little tidbit that I thought was interesting, and that is in 1983, Toyota initiated what they called the F1 project, the flagship number one, which became the LS400, the Lexus. In 1990, it was released on the world, and we know how everything went since then. We know how the history went, and uh, Lexus's reputation for quality, durability, and refinement. It took them seven years to develop the engine, transmission, uh, I believe I read something like five or six hundred different uh, design studies to get to the first LS400 and release it. It took Cadillac an extra two years to design the engine. But I thought that was pretty interesting because the four liter Lexus engine developed 290 horsepower and I'm looking for it here, uh, 260 pound feet of torque. So the North Star was larger definitely more powerful, 
But again, history tells us the difference between the Lexus and what happened and the Cadillacs. Would you rather have a 1995 Lexus or a 1995 Cadillac? Well, I'll let you answer that question. So this all comes back to my mea culpa about saying the North Star is a great engine. You are absolutely correct. The North Star is a troublesome engine that's extremely complex, very, very hard to work on, and this one specific fix, at least, really costs a lot of money. Again, I hold, I contend that from that 2005 on, it's probably a good engine, as good as anything else out there. But from the point of the video that I did, talking about the X bodies coming out in say 1979, 1980, that early 80s, and looking at what General Motors was going to be able to do through the rest of the 80s and into the 90s, and I said, the excellent North Star engine. I still hold that because when it was released, it was powerful, refined, smooth, award-winning. So looking from the 80s forward, that engine was fantastic and a great effort by GM. It wasn't until years later we started to see that the North Star was problematic. So I stand by what I said. It is a wonderful engine, but it is problematic. Mea culpa, guys. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it without clarifying it a little bit more because if you're looking at those early years, it could be a problem. It's going to be tremendous to, uh, you know, tremendously expensive to fix. But I still hold. It was an exciting engine at its time. When it came out, I had an opportunity to drive an STS with one, and it was fantastic. It really was. You know, the interior wasn't as nice as what was being offered to other cars, and the STS was really large. I think it's like eight or nine inches larger than the LS, and the STS was the, the, the Seville, was the smaller Cadillac at the time. It was a huge car, but it was really nice, and the engine was marvelous. Yes, I acknowledge it's unreliable. It has problems. Oh, but you can have it fixed. It's just expensive. So I hope that explains it. From the point of view, I was doing that video looking forward. The North Star was a great engine that was coming out. It wasn't until after that we realized it was going to have problems and it was going to be super, super expensive. And it's kind of sullied its reputation in the automotive world, even though they eventually fixed the issues. It just took a short 12 years for them to get around to it. So I hope this helps. I hope you found that information interesting. Please subscribe, like the video, leave me a positive comment below, and I appreciate you being here.